Hey everyone, welcome to Transformation Tuesday Bible Study. Today we're going to focus on the prayers to use. You know, this is the second part of the series, God's Kingdom versus Satan's Kingdom. And we're going to be focusing on those prayers that we should be using um, to fight these type of battles. So the first thing that we have to do is prepare for battle. We have to prepare for battle. Any type of fight that you're about to go in, you have to prepare for it. The spiritual fight, you must be prepared as well. The second part of it is making sure that you pray against the backsliding that you may have done. I know that not every one of us backslid, but there's definitely some some of us, you know, that were strong believers that backslid. And maybe that backsliding is being jealous of the people who actually orchestrated all this mess. So that might be it too. And so you need to make sure that your heart is clean of all that before we go into the actual prayer against all these, you know, folks and their demons and their spirits and their principalities that are working within them using Psalm 64. So I really hope that this blesses you. We will be using the New King James Version Bible, but you can pretty much use any acceptable version and follow along with us. Or if you don't have a Bible at all, we will have all the scriptures on the screen for you. Once again, thank you for joining us. I really pray that this blesses you and that you really, really grasp onto this and use this prayer daily to get rid of all this because it will come to, I mean I'm telling you if you have the faith to believe and you really really do these prayers with fervor with the power of the Holy Spirit within you they will so like any battle so like any battle, we must prepare for battle. We must prepare for war. And as Christians, that means that we ask God to do certain things in Jesus' name, like sending forth warrior angels. We plead the blood of Jesus on ourselves. We ask him to fill us up with the Holy Spirit. The reason why we do all these things is because when you're asking him to do that and you ask him to do that in faith and you truly do believe, enemies can't penetrate that barrier. They can't penetrate those, that barrier. Those warrior angels will rip them apart, you know? And then of course the blood of Jesus, they can't pass that, you know? So when you're praying these things, that's the reason why, so that they can't hear what you're praying about and what you're talking about. And these are especially for people who can't pray in tongues. If you can't, that's okay. If you can, please, by all means do it. I'm 100% for praying in tongues if you're able to do that. But if you can't, this, this is a perfect way to do it. And even if you can pray in tongues, it's always good to ask for a hedge of protection around you. And then after doing that, definitely repent of all sins known and unknown. Make sure that your heart is clean. Name those sins that you're repenting of. And really, really name them because you know that these are sins that you know that you don't want to fall back into and you don't want to slip back into, just name them. Any of the one that you can recall. And if you can't recall, remember you're repenting of sins known and unknown. So you're clearing your heart of them. And then you ask God, or sorry, you ask you plead the blood of Jesus over yourself and you ask Jesus to cleanse you of that with the blood of Jesus, of course. So you're completely cleared of that. You could even ask God to take those sins to his throne for complete and final judgment so that they'll never come back again. And I'm telling you, if you have the faith in God to believe, they will not come back. Those desires to even do those sins, to even practice those sins, will never come back. So you have to make sure that your heart is clear. And once you do that, you're also present, preventing yourself from any oncoming attacks, from any oncoming interference by the enemy, because you've already repented of those sins. You told God that, look, you're sorry. You repent of them and he has forgiven you. Once you repent with your, within your heart and you know that these are things that you're never gonna do again, he forgives, he always forgives. So that's definitely the thing that you should do next. And then after that, of course, like we talked about in the you know previous session, you should definitely put on the full armor of God. Have your Bible with you, you know, have your Bible with you. Of course, you must pray in the spirit at all times. And you have to pray with faith. You have to pray with faith for yourself and for God's people. And also for people who aren't God's people. I know this is not in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, but for people who are not, you know, believers yet, for them to become believers. So this is definitely some good preparation before you actually start doing any kind of prayers or psalms. So with that said, 
Let's go into Psalm 73. So everyone, open up your Bibles to Psalms 73, verses 1 through 7. That's Psalms 73, verses 1 through 7. Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than their heart could wish. So let's continue on in Psalm 73, verses 8 through 14. That's Psalm 73, verses 8 through 14. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who are always at ease, they increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued, and chastened every morning. So the book of Psalms is written by many authors, the main one being David, of course. This particular psalm was written by Asaph. And in the psalm he's talking about how he slipped, or how he was about to slip, because here's somebody who's being righteous, he believes in God, he's following all of God's laws and everything, but he's not reaping the so-called financial benefits of that. Meanwhile, there are people who don't believe in God and are wicked, they're worshiping their idols, they're doing all sorts of things, they have wicked plans, they're hurting people, they're hurting uh, Israelites, they're doing all these sorts of things, they wear violence on themselves, they, they wear a necklace of pride, you know, these people are living well. They're living well without a care in the world with ease to him. That's what he's seeing. And so he's lamenting on that. Uh, on And, you know, he's showing the jealousy that he has. And so this psalm is perfect for anybody who's kind of going through that right now. I mean, don't we see that there's all these billionaires that are making so much more money after this crisis? Don't we see that there are celebrities that are doing well, that are touting their, their um, wealth or even asking for donations? Um, meanwhile, they can donate their old money, so to speak. I mean, this is these are things that are definitely happening that can definitely affect you, but you really shouldn't let it affect you because these people are actually, you know, making money that's not necessarily good money. You know, they're selling their souls for that money. Meanwhile, you have your souls for that. But this is a perfect thing to use, this perfect psalm to use to clear yourself of that before you go and pray against the evil that's going on in the world because you're not only praying for yourself with Psalm 64, which we're going to go over much later, you're praying for the world. You're praying, you're praying for believers. You're praying for non-believers as well to come to Christ. You know, we'll see how I'll put that in there. But yeah, you're praying for others. So you want to make sure that you're clean and that there's no, that the enemy has no access. You know, the enemy can't, the enemy has no access to you through that portal of jealousy, through that portal of envy, through that portal of covetousness, through that portal of idolatry because you're idolizing them over what of what they have. You're putting them first and what they're thinking and what they're doing, how much money that they made before you're putting God first. That's idolatry. So these are things, this is the best psalm to use to make, to cleanse yourself of that. Um, and we're going to go into how he also resolves or comes to a resolution within this psalm and why this is also so healing next. So everyone open up your Bibles to Psalm 73, 15 through 20. That's Psalms 73 verses 15 through 20. That's the same Psalm as the last time, but of course different verses. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God that I understood their end. 
Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation, as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakes, so Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. So everyone, let's continue on in Psalm 73 verses 21 through 28. That's Psalm 73 verses 21 through 28. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. So as we get towards the end of Psalm 73, Asaph realizes the error of his ways and he repents because he knows that even though he doesn't have all the money in the world, there's definitely a point of him worshiping God and believing in God. And he finds this out in worship in God's sanctuary. So that's where he discovers this. And he repents of that because he also talks about what happens to the wicked at the end of the day. They perish, they have extreme consequences, consequences that we don't have to have because we believe in God and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. I know that Christ wasn't there then, but this kind of ties into that. So that's what we have to realize. We have to realize what their end is. We have to realize what their end is and not covet what they have or not covet what they have, so to speak. We don't have to want, we don't have to have what they have. We don't have to have a lot of money. You know, they made a lot of money off of this, yes. You know, and so what we have to do is continue to pray against all their plans and schemes. Not sit here and want the life that they have or want the money that they have or be jealous that, hey, you know what, I lost my job, but these billionaires are making even more money or these celebrities are making even more money during the crisis, you know? So you have to think of it that way and think about eternity, think about eternal life. That's the whole point of this. When you get to this point of this prayer, you realize, okay, how foolish you felt, you know, or how, you know, silly you must have felt to feel like, you know what, I'm jealous of these people or I have jealousy in my heart because they're prospering during this crisis and I'm not prospering. Because that's not the point in following Christ. The point in following Christ and following God, of course, is not for us to prosper financially, abundantly, or whatever. If it's within His will to do so, then so be it. But that's not the point. The point of following God is to worship God and to live righteously and to be more like Christ. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing and that's what we have to realize and for our own salvation and to not go to hell. That's the whole point. And so the people who are wicked and are plotting all this wickedness, their end is not going to be good. Either that they're going to face consequences because here's another thing of how the enemy works. And I know that we already spoke about this before, but this is something that people need to understand. Once the enemy is done using you for whatever his purposes are, whatever his nonsense purposes are, he will get rid of you and take you with him to hell because now he needs your soul. Now he wants your soul. The more that he takes your soul, the more powerful he so-called gets, so to speak. So that's the whole thing. Once he's done using one of his agents or these people, that's what happens to them. So we really have to, you know, think about that before we start wanting what they have or being jealous of what they have or wanting to be as wealthy as they are, you know, or idolizing them when we're really supposed to be focused on God and not them. And this is a great, a great prayer to use to cleanse your heart of all that and to cleanse yourself of all that so that when you're focusing on the prayer of Psalm 64 that we're about to go into, you have a clear head and a clear heart because you're not jealous of these people. You want justice for what they've done. You want justice for the way they're laughing at the people who are oppressed. You want justice for the way that they're putting us through this all for nothing, basically. Or that's what you want is justice. You know, justice for all and not just for yourself and also for, you know, people who are not in Christ to also come to Christ.
So everyone, let's turn to Psalm 64 verses 1 through 5. That's Psalms 64 verses 1 through 5. Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Guard my life from the terror of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel and conspiracy of the ungodly, from the scheming of those who do wrong, who have sharpened their tongues like a sword. They aim venomous words as arrows to shoot from ambush at the blameless one. Suddenly they shoot at him without fear. They encourage themselves in their pursuit of an evil agenda. They talk of weighing snares secretly. They say, who will discover us? So everyone, let's continue on in Psalm 64 verses 6 through 10. That's Psalm 64 verses 6 through 10. They devise acts of injustice, saying we are ready with a well-conceived plan. For the inward thoughts and the heart of a man are deep, meaning they're mysterious and unsearchable. But God will shoot them with an unexpected arrow. Suddenly they will be wounded, so they will be caused to stumble. Their own tongue is against them. All who gaze at them will shake their head in scorn. Then all men will fear God's judgment. They will declare the work of God, and they will consider and wisely acknowledge what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him, and all the upright in heart will glory and offer praise. So this psalm in particular is focusing on praying against enemies that are coming against David at the time. And these type of enemies that they're talking about, they plan all these secret plots, they have all these secret plans. Isn't that what's going on now? All these crises that are going on, things are being done in secret. We're not given, being given full information. The newscasters are on there igniting fear with their headlines, with what they're saying. They're not giving us any confidence. They're using their words as swords to cut us. And when I mean cut us, I mean anxiety, depression, anger. This is what's happening to us. Then you also have deception and deceptive organizations. Like, I'm sorry, to, I'm gonna have to say it again, but BLM is a deceptive organization. You have people practicing witchcraft that, li that lead that organization. Th this is a big problem. And this is all the type of warfare, think about it. So you have the second heaven, where that's where all the demons are, by the way. And now it's just out of control. And then there are people feeding into that, feeding into that, feeding into that, not knowing, some of them not knowing what's really behind all this or what agendas that they really have that you're now being involved in that you shouldn't necessarily be involved in. And are actually causing more problems for other people and more depression and more suicides and more, I mean, it's, and more anxiety. So these are the types of things that we wanna pray against. And this is a very, very targeted prayer. And every time I've used it, Something has turned over in this whole entire debacle, even in my personal life and things like that. So I think it's definitely a prayer that we could use against all those type of world enemies. And I mean everybody, principalities, celebrities who are using satanic images in their videos, in their music videos, who are using witchcraft images in their videos and in their music, in their content, um, politicians, who definitely have an evil streak, and I mean on both sides. I this is not a it's not a political thing, but this is just to understand that there's principalities working within people, um, and just everything that's going on, even your own business partners or whatever that may be attacking you now that maybe weren't atta attacking you before, but because they're secular, they have these cracks and some demons went in. So this is a very very good prayer to use to end all that. And you have to know that sometimes it won't end immediately. Sometimes it will, to be honest with you, and shocks even me. But because none of this is the Lord's will, I'm not saying that we're not in the end times. Once again, we are in the end times, but there's a lot of machinations and a lot of fake stuff going on to accelerate it, accelerate the time span of it. So that's the whole thing. They're trying to push the timeline. And you can't push God's timeline. So that's not within God's will. So that means that you can pray against it and you don't have to stand in agreement with it at all. So Psalm 64 is an excellent psalm to use to battle all these different principalities, all these different enemies. And, um, you know, me and one of my sisters in Christ, we've already been using it on a daily basis. 
because that's the only way that we're going to be able to turn over things. It's not going to be through screaming. It's not going to be through yelling. Honestly, it's not going to be through protesting. It's just not, you know, unless the Lord leads you to a peaceful type of protest, of course, for our rights or whatever, of course. But prayer is so strong because nobody knows that you're doing it. Nobody knows when you're doing it. Nobody knows exactly what you're saying in it. Me and another person can do a prayer for the same things, but the Holy Spirit might direct us in different ways of how to say that prayer or how to use that psalm. That's why this is so important. That's why this is so needed right now. I mean, I really can't even stress it enough. It's just completely out of control. And the only way that we can change anything right now is through prayer. This is a spiritual war. This is not a war of the flesh. So you can keep screaming till the cows come home. You can keep going out there. You can keep protesting and things won't change. All you're doing is adding, adding, adding to the spiritual warfare that's already out there. The negativity that's already out there. The only way to combat all that is through effective, targeted prayers. And that's what I use this as an effective, targeted prayer that you can use towards any kind of enemy that you're facing, any kind of evil that you see on TV. You could definitely rebuke it using this, this prayer. All these newscasters that are so happy every time the number of cases go up. I mean, it's completely demonic. It's completely not them. It's not even human. It is demonic. That's what it is. So this is definitely the prayer to use. And please join us in using that prayer every single night. So everyone, in this season, we have to be strong and courageous and understand the season that we're in. Anytime that we feel like we're about to, you know, backslide, go to the Word of God. Pray to God and ask Him to take that desire away from you. We want to make sure that we're strong in every single way, spiritually, physically, mentally, and that we're mentally sober so that we're able to pray effectively. You know, the more that you get involved in sin, the more the Holy Spirit quenches within you. And we need the Holy Spirit to pray according to God's will, of course. So we wanna make sure to maintain our strength and to be in the Word of God as often as possible because doing that, it occupies your time and you can use the Bible to both correct you and edify you. Remember, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. That's the Word of God. So that can correct you right then and there when you think you're about to stumble. And of course, use targeted prayers, guys, targeted prayers for the world. And please join us for part three where we're going to talk about, you know, different prayers that you could use for your own personal struggles, you know, depression, enemies that you're facing that are giving you that depression, enemies that you're facing with your business partners, other associates. We will be going over that next. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you.